through the whole book series, I must admit, she's the one that actually made me laugh out loud. Hello my fellow book nerds, in this video I wanted to do a book review finally on the book that like destroyed this year for me was Aragon. So I finally decided to do a book review on this and let you know my thoughts, the characters, who I loved, who I didn't love and all that stuff. So let's get right into it, but before we do, please like this video, subscribe, and hit the notification bell down below, and please watch till the end of the video because that really does help my channel, and yeah, I think that's about it. So let's jump right into this video. Okay, so first things first. I actually, I started reading this a long time ago, it was like, okay, not a long time ago, maybe like four years ago, and I didn't like it. I started reading it and I was like, mm, I, I just didn't feel it. I didn't. I just didn't like it. So I left it. I, I think I read like half of it. So I didn't like it. That's fine. But now my belief in you know, reading the right book at the right time, it has been affirmed that you need to read the, there are certain books that you read at certain times, and I love that. So this book came into my life a long time ago, but I didn't have to read it till this summer and uh, it was great it was it broke my heart like uh, I loved it I loved it so overall I really loved it and I cannot put these books down so that is why I'm like I find I didn't want to do the book review until I'm like I need to be emotionally ready so I think I am now so we're gonna start off with the first one and um, let's start off with the story of this so right off the bat there's conflict you got this thing called a shade coming up and I'm no you have no idea what that is and it sounds very he explains it very well where it sounds kind of creepy and weird and he's dangerous you know that right off the bat and then there's elves and they're carrying this very prized possession and the shade you know ends up killing two of them and captures one of them so right off the bat a ton of conflict oh and she sends this object to Aragon magically so there's magic as well elves magic shades which we don't know what it is and now you get your main character Aragon so it starts off pretty good I thought the only thing that bugs me is that you don't know what a shade is and he, he but he does do a pretty good job of explaining how dangerous it is even though you don't know what it is until like the third book you don't figure out exactly what it is I did cry People obviously die. Like, there's no good book that people don't die in. I, it's hard to find a book that's good and people don't die. Only exception is probably like Percy Jackson, because people don't really die in that book, because it's a really, really kids book. But besides that, people do die. The concept of this book, pretty much, you could put it in a sentence where well, it's like asking a what if question. So, like, what if there were dragons? And not only there were dragons, but there were dragon riders, and these people were very powerful. But what if there was only one left? Or like, no, no, not what if there's only one left, but what if they were pretty much endangered and these dragons were very prized, their eggs were very prized, and hidden from people, you know? So like, it's a bunch of questions, and so it's a really good concept to dive into it, and he did, and he went full blown into this world, and it was really good. So. Right off, all overall, it was a very good, satisfying story. Now, let's get into the characters, which is always my favorite part. Um, start off with Aragon. So he's just about, he's a 16 year old boy. Then you also learn that he doesn't have parents. He, his mother left him with his uncle and he has been growing up with his uncle ever since. So. He's like a sort of tragic story type thing. I feel like every hero, or at least a ton of them, always lose either one or both parents. I mean, there's Batman, um, Peter Parker. I mean, just all of them. They like lose parents. I guess that's a very good motivator for a child, because after that you don't really have anything else. Maybe if he was like a brother or something. I don't know. But yeah, um, he doesn't have parents. He has an uncle. I love him because he... He's such an adventurer. He is completely willing to try new things. Like he's the only one who ever hunts in that type of those mountains because they were considered very dangerous. Um, and because of that, he found the egg. And 
now he doesn't just leave the egg. He sees and he's like, oh, this is worth something, so maybe I could use it to provide food for my family. So he takes it and he tries to sell it. But through that process, he actually ends up getting a dragon instead. So that's pretty cool. I think that's really cool that he, and he doesn't just like want to get rid of the dragon. He keeps it and like loves the dragon, not just as a pet, but eventually you learn through the story that dragons are not just animals, they're not creatures, they're, just, they're not just animals, they have a conscience pretty much as high or higher than um, people or humans. So Aragon overall is very cool that he connects with this dragon and he keeps it and he fights for it with the dragon, imagine. So yeah, Aragon overall pretty cool. This is taking forever. He shows love for his family, for his friends, and eventually you meet Brom, who is also amazing and I'll talk about it in a sec. But he shows love and care for Brahm as well, even though he's kind of a creepy type. Not creepy, more like mystery, mysterious type. And now, like, pretty much the whole story from this point is that he tries to avenge his um, uncle because his uncle was killed because of the egg. So that part is just very sad, but the whole story is him trying to find the people who killed his uncle. Okay, then you have Brahm. He is one of my favorite characters. I kind of love who he is, though you don't really get to know him. But um, he in the in the city, well, town where Aragon lives, Carvajal, um, Brom lives there as well, and he is like the old man storyteller type dude. And you think he's kind of weak and just shabby, but he's not because once Aragon has to flee and he wants to go find the people who killed um, his uncle. Eric and Brom goes with him and he's like, I'm gonna teach you, I'm gonna show you because you're gonna screw it up. So he's, he goes with him and he doesn't tell him anything about who he is at all. He's just a big mystery but somehow he knows all the things about dragons and magic. There's also magic in here and a bunch of other things. So Brom is mysterious, he's like that mentor, that's cool. And to me, I guess his, I was trying to find a flaw in Brom. And I guess the flaw would be him being so mysterious that he doesn't trust anyone with anything. So because of that, certain things do happen in the story. So I would say that's his flaw. Besides that, he's kind of pretty much overall perfect. He's a little stubborn, but who isn't? Yeah, like, yeah, so he is like that. But overall, those two are pretty great. You can't read the story and I can't do a book review on this without talking about Sapphire. Sapphira? Sapphira. Sapphira. I think it's Sapphira. If I say it wrong, oh well. The dragon. She is the dragon. She is beautiful. She is blue. Which, ugh, I would want a blue dragon. That just sounds amazing. Blue is my favorite color. How could I not want a blue dragon after this? But whatever. I could dream. Um, so anyway, she's probably my favorite character in the whole story because she has this properness to her but she's also very um i wouldn't want to say stuck up but like she is she sees her value she sees how awesome she is because she is a dragon and she's like the only one besides the other very scary dragon that they mentioned later on that belongs to the king and well, that's like the only other one so she's the only dragon she's the only girl besides that the only female dragon and she just has this awe to her and she knows it because of that she is very vain that's what i was looking for vain so whenever someone flatters her she like oh i like this person she know you know but she is very she has a ton of wisdom she's a dragon so with dragons just kind of come with a lot of wisdom in them and how to read people and all that stuff so it's really cool but <clears throat> her flaw is being vain and but she still has this wit to her as well she's so she's so cute i she's cute but then fierce it's just awesome i love the whole idea of the dragon and who she is so she is probably definitely my favorite character and through the whole book series i must admit she's the one that actually made me laugh out loud like i don't think because it's not a funny book it's not they're not funny books but they are but um there are certain parts where she's the one that makes me laugh and i kind of love it like, she's just awesome. So she's my favorite character. 
Okay, the last character I need to mention, though there's so many more, but I'll mention them in later books, is... I can't say his name very well, I believe. It's... Murtag? Murtag? M-U-R-T-A-G-H. Murtag. Murtag. I don't know how to pronounce the G-H part, so it's kind of confusing. But, um... <clears throat> he is also a very mysterious fellow. He doesn't come into like the middle of the book. He doesn't come in and he ends up protecting Aragon and helping him in a bunch of ways until they finally reach their destination. I don't- I'm just really trying not to give a lot of things away, but read the book. They're amazing. Um, so he's a very mysterious person and he hides his past from everyone and he is very good at blocking his mind so no one can read his mind. Yeah, that's a thing in the book too. I should mention that. It's very very fascinating. They could talk to each other. Kind of like Aragon and Sapphira have this like connection where they could just talk to each other. Which is really, really cool. It has to do with magic, but that's really cool. So yeah, he is pretty much awesome all the way. And the one thing about him that makes him very fascinating and entering the whole series is that he is the son of pretty much like the second in command of the king. His name is Morzan, the, the second in command um so he's the son of him and he's running away pretty much from the king and everyone so that's like one thing that pretty much encompasses his character who he is that's what he hates and throughout the whole story that thing keeps popping up that idea keeps popping up so it's very fascinating and i think you need to you read into it more during all these books so anywho Characters are awesome. I kind of I just love them and I think they're amazing My reaction um, Favorite character I already mentioned it is Sapphira. I love who she is who her wit her just Amazingness with Aragon. She treats him like a little kid and I kind of love it Even though she's younger than him and he raised her and she does not care She treats him like a little kid because he is tiny compared to her obviously my favorite part so there was like a ton of favorite like scenes in the book. My favorite one I would have to say, and I didn't even mention her, but Arya. She's the she's an elf. Oh she's the elf that I mentioned in the beginning that got, you know, kidnapped. But anywho, she's that she comes back at the end and her and Aragon sword fight and just like the whole scene is like it's pretty like beautiful and well written and you just get the sense of how um powerful these two characters are just for them being who they are one's a dragon rider the other one is an elf and those and elves are very prominent let's say so anyway so that that was my favorite scene in the whole thing and it comes somewhere in the end near the end so yeah you have to read these in amount these books are pretty thick this is the thinnest one and it has 600 no 500 Pretty much 500 pages, 497. Um, my leg is falling asleep, but that one feels very weird. Um, okay, what I did not like, and this one is a spoiler alert, if you haven't read it, just shut it off, because it's a pretty big thing, and it's Brahm's death. That part just broke my heart. Like, I, I had a feeling he was gonna die, but I wasn't completely sure. Well, you're never completely sure when someone's gonna die, but usually the mentor dies in all of series. The only one I could think that they don't die is like Hunger Games. He dies and it's kind of very tragic in the whole thing because I wanted to see him in the other books because there's four books and he dies in this one. I mean, there's three other books and they're massive. How could he not be in this? So I feared he was gonna die like in the third book, not in this one. It was very sad and just broke my heart. I felt so bad for Aragon, but so yeah, that's the part I hated. Any other parts I can't really. T it was hard to like finally start understanding like the magic part of everything, and pretty much introducing the whole world to it. I think he did a pretty good job during the whole series, tying everything together, and slowly bringing in new characters and new. Um, countries and just new races and Twitter because there's elves, there's dwarves, there's um, dragons, 
there's people obviously and there's I think that's it oh and mad people who can do magic which is very rare except with elves and dwarves so anyway it's very overall very good series and I just started with this one and I will get to the next one later on hopefully this month or next month but yes let me know what you think about this book and the series as well and let me know down below what you think of the book if did you love it did you hate it did you think it was too much it's a lot to swallow like a whole different world to swallow so it's very fascinating and trying to get all the races together it's all just very interesting but anyway thank you so much for watching let me know down below what you think and Please like this video, subscribe, and hit the notification bell down below, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye, guys.